guys, welcome to the video. I hope you all are well. Today's build video, guys, is for the Wish of the Class for patch 272 season 25. This is Lon Carnival, guys. Legacy of Nightmares Carnival, man, the green ring set. We're using this set particularly so that way we can add Shrekken to kill the Rift Guard. It's a GR solo push build, guys, and it's amazing with the Dregs of Lies pet gem now and Sliver of Terror. It's really powerful, man. Uh, I've only got two walks on my gear, okay? Two walks on my gear, and I've already done. Where is it on all 6B set? 132. I'm currently ranked 10 on EU. And I did this in 8 minutes 56. With <laughs> just two orgs. So, if you guys like uh, pet builds and Carnival, man, you know, you're going to love this, man. It's so good, man. So, so good. So, you guys, four on pet builds. So, as you go cast Poison Dart, you generate pets up to 15. And they shoot pet darts when you do. And with the new mechanics of Dregs and Liars, a Sliver of Terror. It makes uh, fetches absolutely wreck. It's really, really fun build. Also, it's really fast as well. But you can zip around the map, guys, really quick. It's almost like a speed build as well. Right, before we uh, go for the gear and right, let's quickly show this in action. Let's do 130. Ooh, good map as well. First thing we need to do, guys, is get our snacks up. So spirit walk in straight away. Then you want to hit soul harvest, get your defense up. Then you want to cast Nado, group everything together, drop Big Bad Video at the leap pack, and then start casting dots. Very, very quickly, you will start building fetches, man. You will shoot for as much density as possible. And, um, yeah, you'll start shredding, man. Also, we're very tanky as well. You're not indestructible, but we've got stone gauntlets in this build. If you see a poor power drop, guys, obviously run to it. Your damage rotation is poison, okay? Like this. Look at that. That's insane. I've only got two orgs on. <laughs> I need two orgs. And once you've got your juice, then just run, man. While we're in Spirit Walk, guys, Spirit Walk will last forever until we engage on the Leap Pack. So look, now as you can see, now we get close. It disengages. That's because the new Shuriko is Triumph. All right, Waller, unfortunately, is the worst effect for this build. <laughs> because obviously your pets can't shoot through. Can't shoot through walls, man. But yeah, on the road, main, the main damage rotation, when you're COE, see so it's just, just a ring here. When it's on physical, the next rotation is poison. And that's when you want to be aiming for the elite packs, especially. Then hit Spirit Walk and it procs Shuriken's Triumph Mojo. It does your big damage rotation. Like this. There you go. Like, now watch the damage now on the elite packs. Like, while we're in Spirit Walk. That's insane. <laughs> that's really good damage. There we go. Also, guys, we're using Echoing Fury in the build as well. So uh, every time we kill monsters, we gain up to 75% increased attack speed. Now, the more attack speed in this build you have, the better you can heal yourself. <clears throat> and also snack stricken on the Rift Guardian boss as well, man. For elite packs, guys, to skip, obviously Juggernauts, man. Always going to be with that one pack that you want to skip, man. We'll probably shield in as well. Illusionists ain't too bad on this build, actually. Because as you kill the Illusionists, it's fucking very fury. So, you know, you're going to pop things pretty quick. All right, let's go through. We've got a little conduit now. Spirit Walk on. So, yeah, Spirit Walk won't turn off until we hit a elite pack. Let's see that, boop. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Yeah, guys, don't be scared to get into the middle of these monsters, but Also, guys, I am using Squirt's Necklace in this build. Now, Squirt's Necklace gives us a 100% damage buff, which is awesome. It's really, really good. But unfortunately, you lose it when you get hit. So, um... And also, it increases your damage taken from that, by that hit for 50% damage as well, man. So, sometimes it might kill you. You know, I do die sometimes on this build, but, um... Mostly due because I don't have the right vitality gear on at the moment. But it's definitely best in slot, because when you hit that Rift Guardian, you know, you just gonna have that huge damage ramp. And it's definitely best in slot. Alright, poison rotation is gonna come from the sack. I've got a shield now, so now Squirt's death necklace is up all the time. <laughs> and they're dead. Lovely man, what a great build, man. It's so fun. This is one of my fun builds, one of the most fun builds I've ever played, actually. It's really, really good. Boom, another pack here. Right, physical, now we're going to go poison seconds, get to that poor power, spirit walk, and watch everything just melt. Oh. Bang, dead. Absolutely insane build, man, so good. Because because of the the way the mechanics work with this build, guys, you need to have ancient gear to make this work. Okay, we go for set bonuses for Legacy of Nightmares in a sec. Like I said earlier, you can do the Lon variation of this as well. The Lodge variation, sorry, is where you put the gem into the amulet or ring or whatever. And prop the bonus, but probably you use that version is you won't have no stricken to kill the Rift Guardian. Okay, then you have the official Rift Guardian that has basically tons and tons of ads. Oh, there's a dude here, didn't see him there. And um, yeah, it can make it a lot slower. But this version here, we've, we've obviously, because we add stricken that third gem, it makes it a lot easier. Fortunately, this guy here has got in an awkward spot. There we go. 
And there's the... Oh my word. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, that, that works. There's another little pack here. But yeah, guys, as usual, you want to be pulling as many mobs as possible into one spot, because obviously, you know, you want to keep Echoing Fury propped all the time by killing trash while you're engaging elites, you know, all that sort of stuff. And pop, they're dead as well. Can you believe this is 130? <laughs> 130. It's insane. It's so fun, man. I absolutely love this build. It's not our strongest build this season. Arakir Corpse Spiders is our top build this season, but it's extremely good, man. It's good for speeds as well. It's a really good speed build. I got a guy here. Our shield's about to run out now, so we're now we'll lose squad necklace damage bonus next. We're going to get hit a bit more now. Like I said, it's mostly there for the RG. For the old Rift Guardian, man. Get the extra damage. Lovely. Oh, almost done already. Also, oh, there's a little cooldown right now. Hey guys, still got the cooldowns. You need to be <coughs> you need to be cycling <coughs> your cooldowns as much as possible. Cycle your cooldowns as much as possible because every time you do that, you're increasing your damage reduction and damage by 12.5%. Which is lovely. Da -da -da. That's why you see me cycling all my stuff all the time. Keeping that damage and damage reduction up. But the main thing to do on the rotation is like when you see physical pop up. Hit Nado, group everything together, and then hit Spirit Walk as you're in Poison Rotation and on Conventional Elements Rotation as well. And that way, you'll just do your biggest damage spike you can possibly do. But for general speeds and light, you don't have to worry about that, you know. Because it's just going to blaze regardless. You can see now this one here is taking a bit longer now because we've got loads of ads around it. As soon as we kill one of these fellas, should kick in. Let's come out of that corner a little bit. Duh, duh, duh. Hate Sandboss, man. Poison rotation now. Whoa, there it goes. Look. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, I'm going to probably play this today on Twitch. Feel free to follow at Big Daddy Den 76 on Twitch TV. And uh, probably push this today and all get, like, fully all get, man. With, like the base 125s from the seasonal buff. Rift Guardians here. Best Rift Guardian guys you can have is Hamlin, Sactris, anything that summons ads basically. And that way when you kill those ads you proc out Griffith Fury basically. We want to be within 25 yards preferably as well. Gom's a bit annoying though because obviously he's got these fart clouds around him. He does summon a few ads actually. Right, poison rotation now so hit spirit walk. There you go, you can see the damage rotation now. Look at that, whoa. <laughs> Also, guys, we used to pierce the veil on this build as well, man. So you do that an extra 20% damage at range as well. You know, he's got a few ads there now. Let's go over here. This might be a bit more comfortable over it. Well, right, he's got Fire Cloud there. But just remember, as you're casting, you're always healing yourself constantly. And like I said earlier, uh, we're using Stricken in this build. So as long as you keep casting on that boss, Stricken's going to proc and it's going to make that damage go up and up and up and up. Da, da. Not the best boss for this build. It's a shame Hamley didn't spawn, man. A good old Hammy. Because uh, you would literally blaze him down in a few seconds. <laughs> Lovely. There you go, guys, man. So we've just two wargs. Uh, we did that with, what was that, seven minutes left, man. Seven minutes left. It's not too bad at all. Right, guys, let's go over the gear cube and all that good stuff. Let me just quickly do my gem ups. Yeah, guys, definitely check it out, man. It's it's extremely fun this season. I really hope Blizzard keep the Soul Shard system in the game for at least seasonal play. Because it makes so many old builds like this actually viable. You know, in today's gaming environment on D3 for the leaderboards and stuff. It's really, really good. Hope they keep it, man. I hope they keep it. Alright, guys. So, um, yeah, let's go for it again. Alright, guys. So obviously, you need to have Wailing Host and Litany Ring. Okay, now these are key to the build. Right. Uh, while this is your only set iron bow, so you're not going to wear any other set gear. Ancient items you have equipped increases your damage but dealt by 750% and reduces your damage taken by 4%. So you need to get all this gear ancient, okay? You need to get it ancient because you need to get that extra 750 per piece. You could probably get away with maybe 6 in the early stages of this build if you want to really want to play it early. But um, yeah, you want at least at least 6. You know, if you have 6 items, you might be able to do 130. Like we just did just, just there because, you know, we are fully ancient, aren't we? Okay? Lovely. Okay, guys. So main hand, you want to use dagger and darts. Uh, your poison darts are fetch poison darts in our pierce, so it goes through all targets and deal with an up to an additional 
500%. This one's not particularly good, it's not got no percent damage on it right now. Okay, so yeah, basically as you're casting darts, all your darts pierce through all the targets. Brilliant. I right, think, guys, the new Shuriken's Triumph after the initial duration of Spirit Walk ends, it will continue to last as you tap three times or into the league enemies within 20 yards. You And it also gives you up to an extra 100% damage. So basically, like I said, when you're in Poison Rotation, hit Spirit Walk to proc this damage bonus. And while you're in Spirit Walk, your damage is going to peak. I'm going to say you do it, basically. Such a good thing. Like I said, you can see me skipping all the elites there. Uh, not the elites, sorry. All the trash man looking for a round. I like Severance a lot. But if you want an extra second of uh, that damage, I think you can switch over to Jaunt. It's brilliant, man. So good. Lovely. Okay, guys. Uh, I'm using Ice Climbers. Why are we using Ice Climbers? Gain immunity to freeze and mobilize flex. That's brilliant. But what's really nice about this, it, an Ice Climbers gets rid of the negative effect from Stone Gauntlets. Stone Gauntlets, getting hit increases your armor by 50%, but reduces your movement speed by 15% and your attack speed by 20%, and this stacks up to five times. Now, it's like, oh, extra armor, but destroys all my movement speed and attack speed. If you're using Ice Climbers, this negates that negative effect. And this armor bonus makes you really, really tanky, like super tanky, man. I love this combination. It is so, so good. Right, guys, in the weapon, we are using the Dregs of Lies. This is the new Soul Shard, okay? Now, you want this to roll with attack speed and the pet stacking damage bonus, okay? So each time your pet hits an enemy, your damage is increased by 0 0.5 by 5 seconds, then reaches up to 100 stacks and it goes back down again. Okay, so when it hits the 100 stacks, hopefully you're on poison rotation and you hit Spirit Walk. <laughs> That's when your damage will go, woo, go through, go through the absolute uh, stratosphere. Uh, instead of attack speed, guys, you can roll for poison, but attack speed is better. This build is all about attack speed. That's your more attack speed you have, the faster you can heal yourself, you can snatch trick and quick on the Rift Guard and all that good stuff. Lovely. Okay, guys, legendary gems in the rings, okay? So we're using Simplicity Strength. This increases our damage of our primary abilities, so basically poison darts from yourself and your pets, okay? Your pets will always hit for poison damage as well. And also, guys, Simplicity Strength actually heals you as well, okay, for 4% of your maximum health pool. Now, I've got a very low health pool because my gear is not rolled right yet, right now, but you should be rocking about 750, 800k. What you can do if you don't have that HP, you can put some in from Paragon. To just keep yourself alive because yeah, the higher health or the more percentage you can heal, heal per hit. Which now, guys, no brainer. Tax speed, CHD, poison dart damage, man. All about that tax speed and deeps. Next gem, guys, you could use what of course is Spain of the Stricken. Uh, Stricken lets you stack damage onto the Rift Garden. Without this gem, the Rift Garden will take forever to die unless it's a Rift Garden that summons an enormous amount of ads like Hamlin or Sactress. Amulet, guys, we use the Squirt's Necklace with a massive 100% damage buff, okay? Like I said, this can kill you sometimes, so uh, be careful. If you're playing hardcore, make sure you use self-res instead of pierce the veil, so, uh, you know, you don't die in one hit, okay? Be careful, okay? But like I said, you know, once you're in a lot of density and stuff like that, you're going to be very tanky because there's loads of damage reduction set up in this build. And of course, guys, Enforcer, man, for increasing all your pet DPS, so your pet's blowing darts is basically pet DPS, so, uh, yeah, it makes them hit even harder. Lovely. Shoulders, guys. You can actually use anything you want, but I quite like Poldras on the Skeleton King because it sometimes gives you an extra self-res, which is great. So use that, but you can use anything you want, for really. It's up to you. How many guys, of course, Mask of Jerem. It's better to put the Mask of Jerem in the cube. I, I haven't found a good Carnival yet, so I've got Carnival, basically, in here. But most of the time, it's, it's best just to wear the Carnival, so that way you can max out your pet DPS. I'm missing 6% currently on the Jerem. Okay, so yeah, guys, Jerem basically gives you a big a big old damage buff to all your pets, up to 200%. And then, guys, we're using the Sliver of Terror. You want this to roll with Intelligence and the Attack Speed and Crit buff, okay? So uh, your Attack Speed and Critical Chance are increased by 5% for each skill on cooldown. Your cooldowns are increased by 25%, which is obviously mad, but for every skill on cooldown, you take 12.5% reduced damage and 12.5% increased damage. So uh, as you can see here, I'm on 2.41 attack speed, yes? If I hit a cooldown skill, now so I hit my Horrify, bang, look, 2.49, Nado, 2.57, Soul Harvest, we're kind of, we've got no talent current targets, Spirit Walk, Big Bad Voodoo, look, we're up to 3% seconds. So that's why you want to be cycling all your cooldowns all the time, because it's going to give you damage reduction and attack speed and damage. Brilliant, man. Such a great gem. I love it. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, then, guys. So, uh, offhand, guys, of course, is uh, not offhand. Sorry, uh, Bracer is uh, the Kuma's Ornament Bracer. Okay, so if you've got between one to three snacks, this thing now gives you 60% damage reduction now. Just for having one to three snacks. Okay, which is great. It's a massive change for Witch Starter. And finally, we've got baseline toughness now, guys, on Doc, man. And also, you get 2% damage reduction per snack of Soul Harvest as well, man. 
I love this thing, man. It's so good now that we've actually got proper damage reduction. And also, guys, we've got extra damage reduction from Aquila Carace as well. While you're above expert resource, so 90 to 95 resource, all damage taken is reduced by 50% as well. So while this is up here, right here, Aquila, you've got an extra 50% damage reduction. The only time this drops is when you cast Nader. And you can see it's gone. And it's like, so what we've done is we're now using... We're going to be using Spine Dart to basically regain our power. Okay, so as you shoot, you're going to gain power back very quickly to re-enable this bonus. Okay, And also, guys, key to the build, of course, is Death Diggers. Death Diggers increases your uh, primary skill damage by up to 100%. I've actually got a really good pair here as well, which is great. The old Death Diggers. So, um, yeah, increase all your damage to by you, your Dart's pets, man. Also, guys, you're not limited anymore to the Mana Spender on Poison Dart. You don't have to use Spine Dart. You can actually use Snake to the Face now for stun. You could use Splinters if you want to. It's up to you. But I do recommend still to use Spine Dart, because like I said, because soon as you cast Nado, your crit is going to drop. Then you need to recast your darts very quickly to prop that 15 mana per hit. And then uh, the Quiller will pop back up, because it needs to be above X resource. Lovely. Okay, guys, what is in the cube, baby? In the cube, guys, we have, of course, got the Echo Fury. As we kill up to five targets, you gain 75% attack speed buff and a 25% movement speed buff. So once you're on full whack, five stacks, guys, and then your poison rotation, then you hit that spirit walk, those packs will melt. Absolutely melt. Such a great item. I love it. Uh, you don't have to use this, but I really recommend it. But what you can do, say you're playing hardcore, you need a lot more tank, just pop in a Sacred Harvester in here, guys, you know? Just pop in a Sacred Harvester. I don't actually have one extracted, but if you put in a Sacred Harvester, this here uh, gives you 10 stacks of Soul Harvest. You know, proc your bracer like crazy, give you a ton of damage reduction, okay? So if you're new, say so you want to play some hardcore, start with Sacred Harvester, get some good gear, get orged, and then eventually switch over to Echo Fury. But if you're software, guys, go straight away to Echo Fury, man. Brilliant. Carnival, guys, the 10 factions closer to you will shoot powers or powerful darts for every time you do, okay? So um, without this, the build doesn't work, <laughs> basically. This enables 10 of your factions, or 15, to shoot darts closest next to you, okay? Brilliant. The last one of these guys, of course, is Convention of Elements. So uh, as soon as we hit Poison Rotation, that is your damage window for you to do your crazy DPS. Okay, lovely. My right, guys, skills, but... And then we go over the follower. Poison Dart, guys. Spine Dart, okay? So uh, like we said, gain, you gain mana, and uh, your, they, your pets shoot darts when you do, okay? Primalist, guys. Primado. Increase damage reduction. Uh, increase the damage um, buff by 15%. And also, this is your grouping spell. So yeah, this is how you pull everything to one spot. And then hit that trigger, man. <laughs> Watch everything die. It's great. Big Bad Voodoo Guy Slam Darts gives you movement speed buff, attack speed buff, and also 15% increased damage. Okay. If you're playing hardcore, you can switch this over to Ghost Transfer Tank if you want to. Lovely. Uh, Soul Harvest Guys, Languish, Armor, and Intelligence Buff. Always keep this up, up to five stacks. Spirit Walk Severance. I prefer Severance because I really, really like mobility for hunting the elite packs on my push. But if you do take Jaunt, you will keep, you get another one second of the damage bonus from Shuriken's Triumph, okay? But they, these are your two options, you know. Use what, what you fancy. Horrify, guys, Frightening Aspect, 50% armor buff. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect, because you need it, because this build can go very, very high now. So you need that extra armor to survive. Also, guys, talking of armor, if you find that you're dying too much, take out the topazes in your, in your chest and your legs and replace it with rubies or emeralds, which will give you more armor on your character, okay? Lovely. Then, guys, for passive, controversial for the 20%, 25% uh, damage buff within 20 yards. It always needs to be within 20 yards of the lead pack or which gun that you're killing to optimize your DPS. Uh, fetch sick events, guys. So, uh, every time we shoot a, uh, a poison dart, there's a chance to summon a fetch, okay? So, that's this is why attack speed is so important in this build on your gear. Because, you know, especially at the beginning of the, of the fight, you know, you want to try and get your fetches up so you actually got your DPS going. But once they got the going, they last 60 seconds each, okay? Brilliant. Then, guys, pierce the veil. Uh, all damage increased by 20%. This works for the whole range of the screen. So, say you've got a really horrible pack, man, and you're like, oh, I don't want to go too close to this fella because he's absolutely knocking the crap out of me. You know, you can play it from a super far range, okay? But you can actually change this to anything you want. Okay, so if you're on hardcore, especially, or even on softcore, you can take self res, you know, that's absolutely fine. If you need ultra tank, like crazy tank, and you want to sit in the middle of all those monsters, take Swamp Planet Tumor, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> if you put this on like this, oh my god, you're going to be absolutely ridiculously tanky in, in the uh, density, because every, every monster within uh, 20 yards, you gain physical poison, fire, and cold resistance. Okay, so if you do it this way, it's nuts. But obviously, if you're playing softcore, 
you want to be maximizing your DPS, so go Pierce. But yeah, if you're having tough issues with Swamp Land, let's do Swamp Land Shim. And then guys, uh, Grave Injustice, this is key to the middle, man. So every time you kill a monster, you gain one second cooldown on all your skills and you gain life and mana, man. Lovely. Okay, guys, for follow up, now, like we said earlier during the, uh, when we're doing the run, if you're using the Enforcer on your build, that gem, damage reduction, works for the Enchantress, your follower. Okay, so basically they gain the 90% damage reduction, which is great. So that means you can use the Hand of the Prophet token, okay, which basically makes her have all of her skills. So she gets Charm, Temporal Pulse, Amplification, uh, Prophetic Harmony, Powered Shield, Erosion, Focus Mind, and Fate Slaps. So you actually get all of these skills because of this thing, one thing here. Now, to make the follower survive, you need to use Mutilation Guard, Legendary Gem, level it up to 100. And then you want to use historical alteration as well. And this gives her enough damage reduction to survive without the instructable token that she would normally use. Okay. Brilliant. All right, let's go over the rest of the gear then, guys. So uh, I'm using Thunder Fury because I like the stun. Okay. Because basically, if you pair Wild Bird Ring, this ring here, with Thunder Fury, you're going to get a stun, which is great. You want to be running with attack speed on all of her gear as well, which is great. And I'm actually using a Dragon Lies on the follower guys right now because it's basically got attack speed on it. <laughs> it's got attack speed and it's got life on here. So uh, this is how she basically keeps alive on the GR push. She very rarely dies, actually. I can't remember the last time she died now. because She's got a lot of life on here on her gear, which is really good. So yeah, guys, uh, Thunder Fury and Wild Bird Ring. Stun. Absolutely fantastic, man. So when you find a really hard Rift Guardian, because your follower got so much attack speed, she's like chucking those little bolts, man. The Rift Guardian will go, Ugh! it keeps getting interrupted and stunned and stuff. So that's why I always use that sub. It's good. For boots, guys, I'm using Ice Climb, so she can never be frozen or mobilized, which is really, really nice. So she's always active. Always use canes, gloves, and legs here because I just do a swap out to the belt when I'm farming keys, so it just makes it nice and simple. Lovely. Uh, other ring, guys, of course, is the Oculus Ring, so when we get a poor power, always run into that poor power, guys, for that up to 85% damage increase. Shoulders, just use homing pads, anything you want, really. Just make sure it's, uh, it's good. Homing pads basically gives you damage reduction when you teleport, which is pretty good. Blind Faith, guys, is really nice as well. And make sure you use a life gem in the helm with your follower as well to keep her alive. And uh, Blind Faith gives you basically a chance to blind on hit, so another CC. It's really good. For chest plate, guys, I still don't have a Tarashis chest plate. <laughs> but I'm just using this Zuni Marrow at the moment because it's got a ton of it on it. But uh, you'll use Tarashis because it's got an attack speed roll basically on it. Which now, guys, again for attack speed, uh, flavor of time. Uh, Pilot Flicks last twice as long, so two minutes shield, one minute Condi, one minute power, two minutes speed is amazing, so it makes a massive difference to your push. And of course, uh, Nemesis Braces as well, so we spawn extra leap packs on Shrines and Pylons. Lovely, man, lovely. Also, guys, for your follower, you want to be hitting 25,000 intelligence, okay? You want to be hitting 25k, because when you hit 25k, you max out these buffs down here. Okay, so application is now on 10%, which is massive. So it gives you an extra 10% elemental DPS. So you can see all, of, all these extra percentages now. So, um, yeah, you want to hit 25,000. Just chuck an ancient gear, even all get guys with cannon spares if you have to. You can see I've put a little intel gem in here and all the intel stuff on the legs and the chest. But yeah, you're aiming for 25k to max out your amplification and prophetic harmony buffs, okay? And uh, that makes uh, a huge difference to your push. Lovely. And there you go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Feel free to like and subscribe and share this vid. In the video description, there's snack guides and Diablo fans for the roles of gear and skills rather than go through this video, guys, and ports it and stuff. Take care, guys. Enjoy it, Lord Carnival. It's an absolute banger. See you in the next video. Have fun in Sanctuary. Lovely.